the uh, next part. So here we're going to look at different graph types, and this is actually uh, quite simple, but there, 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 is, there are some cool things in, in these circles that I'm going to reveal to you today. So first thing, simple graph. What is a simple graph? A simple graph, uh, well, a graph is simple if it has no loops or multiple edges. So you guys can see that this is how we define a loop. So I talked about this. This is self-connection, basically. We call it self-connection, so an edge that connects up to the same node. And a multi-edge is basically, you guys need to make a difference between a directed graph and a multi-edge. What is the difference? Anyone can tell me. Now. What is the difference between uh, a directed, let's say this is my graph and it's directed and I have a mom, like, uh, what should I add here if it's directed? I should add, sorry, I should add directions, right? So simple. This is A to B, B to A, but this is a multi-edge. What does it mean? A multi-edge, there is no directionality. It means there are two different routes that allow you to go from A to B and B to A. It might be two different uh, bridges that connect that, these two cities, A and B, right? But there is no directionality here. It means you have multiple edges that can connect two nodes, not just two, it can, you can have three, you can have more. And with these complex representations, we need to think about, well, how can I define the connectance? How can I threshold? How can I binarize, right? How can I, all these tip, like very basic um, operations that I introduced, I would like you guys to think about them uh, and generalize them to the concept of multi-edge, okay? Now, the second one is what we call a com complete graph. This is quite simple. So a complete graph is a, a graph that has each of its nodes connected to all other nodes. So basically, uh, every two nodes are adjacent, adjacent. So, for example, uh, this is a complete graph, okay? So it's very simple. If I add another node, I need to connect it to all other, all of these nodes. If I add another one, it needs to be connected to all other nodes, okay? Now, subgraphs. What is the definition of a subgraph? So we've seen graphs, different types of graphs, weighted, un like weighted, uh, binary, directed, undirected, simple, complete. Subgraphs, it examines the structure of the graph that lie within a given graph. So it's like just a, a sub, like a, a, an extraction of a graph. It's a subgraph, it's like so natural, right? Very intuitive. So let's define it mathematically. So a graph H is called a subgraph of G if every vertex and edge of H belong to G. So it's quite simple. It means like the set of edges of H, they belong to the set of edges of uh, G. And also, the um, edges, uh, sorry, the set of nodes belong to the set of nodes of um, uh, G, and the edges also belong to the set of edges of G for the subgraph H. Now, a graph G is a subgraph of itself, of course, because it belongs to itself, right? So that's very trivial. Now, um, and all other subgraphs are, what we call them, this is important, we call them proper graphs. If you exclude the graph itself, all other subgraphs are called proper graphs. Okay, uh, so if H is a subgraph of G having the same vertices as G, then H is a spanning subgraph of G. Okay, so it means that in this case, let's look at this graph right here uh, and say, well, this H, right, this is the, our graph G. Let's extract a sub, uh, let's extract an, uh, a subgraph from this graph. What can I possibly do? So the only condition here is that it has the same vertices. So I need to keep the vertices, but I am allowed to remove what? Edges. Very good. So what is the only edge that, what are the edges that I can possibly delete? There are different edges I can delete, not only one. One, two. I can delete this one. So now I have a, a spanning subgraph. What else can I delete? One, three, yes, and two, three. That's it. Okay, good. Now, next, number four, where is, no, number, number four is right here. Okay, induced subgraph. So what is an induced subgraph? 
uh, given a non-empty set S, okay, so this is a non-empty set of nodes of J, so I pick randomly like, you know, different nodes of my graph uh, G. The subgraph G of S of G induced by the set F of nodes um, has as vertex set S where two vertices U and V are adjacent if and only if U and V are adjacent in G. Okay, so I want you guys to ponder over this. I'll give you one minute and just read it, trying to understand it, and tell me which of those subgraphs, H1 and H2, is induced. Here what it means, it means we need to keep the local structure, okay, between the that subset of, of, of nodes. So if two, there is a path that connects U and V in the original graph, right, and U and V are in my set, that path cannot disappear because these two guys, there is, there is a root that connects them, okay, otherwise it's not induced. Now, which one is induced? Who thinks that H1 is induced? Yes or no? Yes, H1 is induced. Now, H2, is it induced or no? No, very good. Why is that? Because V, W is missing. Okay, very good. Now, let's move to this one. Oh, this is the best part. And there is actually uh, a paper that you guys will find in the resources, also on the YouTube video. I'll put all the resources, extra resources to read. So this is a paper published in a, like a very, like in a high-ranked conferences, uh, um, triple uh, AI, okay? So in 2019, and it's on, actually the paper, if what I recall, it's using hypergraphs to do some, uh, to build some uh, neural networks. Okay, so here, let's define a hypergraph. What is a hypergraph? Okay, so first, a graph models the pairwise relationship between two nodes, right? We're just interested in, like, we have, like, one edge connecting only two nodes. So the hypergraph, on the other hand, and models what we call the high-order relationships amongst nodes. So a, hyper a hypergraph H is a generalization of a graph in which an edge can join any number of vertices. So an edge can connect not only two nodes, a single edge can connect many nodes. Okay, I will explain. So it is a set of non-empty subsets. Basically, you can think of the, each hyper edge as a set of nodes. We're clustering nodes in different ways. So here, for example, a typical graph. Let's look at a typical graph. So in a typical graph, if I do um, edge, let's look at the typical graph. So this is my typical graph. So edge one, edge two, edge three. I, ha I only have three edges, okay? So edge one, two, and three, uh, they let me add another edge, okay, edge four, okay. So these edges, they connect what? E1 connects node V1 and V2, right? Correct? This is actually H. This is what we call an incidence matrix, by the way. Incidence matrix. And a hypergraph is not defined by the adjacency matrix uh, directly. It's defined by the incidence matrix. Now, for E2, it uh, joins two nodes, V2 and V4. V2 and V4. E3 joins uh, V4 and V3. E4 joins V1 and V4. So, what do you guys notice? In this, in this incidence matrix, for my graph... Uh, let's call it G1 representation, okay? What do I have? For each edge, you see that one edge connects only maximum 
two notes and not less. So it's equal, either two or, you know, you have a bunch of zeros, basically. It cannot, so it's it should be equal to two. So the number, if you sum up each row, uh, sorry, uh, sorry it's each column, you're going to find that the sum should be equal to two in this case. Sorry? Uh, it cannot be one because look here, if I have uh, an edge by definition in graph theory, it should connect two nodes, right? An edge E, it should connect two nodes VI, VJ. So it cannot be possible for an edge to be like hanging off a node and not reaching another one. For Huh, self, very good. Yeah, so you're talking about the exceptions here. I like it. Very good, very good remark. Indeed, indeed. It can be then equal to one. That's that uh, slipped my mind. Yes, so what he's talking about is this case, guys. So if you have an edge V, uh, sorry, a node V, and you have an edge E, okay? So this one, actually, it's like connecting to itself. So in this case, we can have, uh, oops, I messed it up, but you guys can see. So basically you can have, no, no, no. We can have a zero, so we can have only one. So it's either zero, one, or two. Zero, it means no edge. One, it means self-connection. Two, it means it's connecting two nodes. Okay, got it. Great, now let's look at the hypergraph. So what does, how do we define a hypergraph? So here in this example, a hypergraph is a set of nodes. So I'm going to define a hyper edge, uh, a hyper edge E1. So let's say E1 will include these guys. Okay, so E1 includes V1, V2, and V4. And then uh, this is E2, so let me do E1. Okay, that's hyper edge 2 includes only V3. And then I have another hyper edge. Now what's interesting, hyper edges can overlap. Okay, so E3 uh, has V2 and V3. And then E4, it can be also included in, can be this guy, right? So this is E4, has only one. So this is basically the definition of a hypergraph. Now, you guys know what a hypergraph is, but what you can think about is how to generalize how the concept of binarization, thresholding, you know, uh, edge connectivity, hyper edge connectivity, right? Like a number of hyper edges. So all those notions that we saw on graphs, I would like you to, when you go back home, to sit down and think about how can we possibly define them using these incidence, this incidence matrix instead of the adjacency matrix. Okay, good. Now, and yes. Very. Okay. Now it's confusing you. A subgraph and a hypergraph. In a subgraph, it's uh, for example, this is look. This is a subgraph of my graph, right? So it has this node, this node, and these two edges, right? But in this subgraph, what do I have? An edge can connect what? Two vertices, right? But in the hypergraph, in the hypergraph, we have what we call an incidence matrix H, and a, an edge can connect more than uh, two nodes. Okay, so see what we have here, the number of uh, nodes in edge, uh, in the hyper edge E1, it's basically three, okay? So, it's a subgraph, so what you can look at, you can look at, um, maybe you can uh, think of the hyper edge as a set of nodes, it's like, uh, you can think about it as a subgraph, right? So a hyper edge is like, it's, quite similar to a subgraph, but it's it doesn't look, what you look at basically is the anatomy of the graph. So when you have a subgraph, you look at the thickness of the connection, you look, you know what I mean? But a, a hyper edge is a set of nodes. It doesn't have connections. You know what I mean? So it's different from a subgraph. It might seem similar, but they are different. 
Uh, we don't. We can build uh, relations. Yes, we can. But for now, we're not going to look at that. But we can build relations between hyper edges. So, and that relation. Why it's called high order? Because guys, one another thing. High order here. We have two nodes, right? We look at their low order connection. Low order, it means we have one level, right? We're just looking at their direct interaction. And this is an edge in a graph, but an, a hyper edge here, we can look at the relationship between two, sub, two sets, two hyper edges, right? So this relationship, we can model it, how similar they are, these sets, right? These hyper edges. So there is a whole lot to the theory of hyper graphs, more than graphs. Okay, great. So this is just a brief introduction of the concept. Now, there is another thing which is also very cool, and it's not commonly used, I think, which is the concept of what we call a, um, a an, an annotated or decorated, annotated decorated graphs. So, so far, all our nodes, they are just nodes, okay? They can represent, for example, a node can represent one item, a city, uh, it can represent uh, a person, like a brain, whatever, okay? Now, when we have an annotated or decorated graph, it means that its nodes can hold attributes. And this is commonly used also in geometric deep learning. So you have nodes holding features. So here, for example, uh, this is my graph. It has nodes. It also has a you know, like edges, okay, now we know the maximum size of edges, we've seen that before, counting the number of edges in a graph, but I also have an additional matrix X, uh, and it's a N by D matrix, okay, so this is an N by D, so D is basically the number of features that a node can hold, so these are the different nodes, so here you have nodes, and these, you can call them, uh, the number of columns are features or are attributes, which actually decorate or annotate your graph. What does this mean? It means that here we have our uh, graph. And for example, uh, you want to sell, let's say, houses, or whatever, in different parts of the city. Uh, each house has three attributes. It might be the number of rooms. Uh, you can put the number of rooms, right? You can put also uh, the area of the house, and you can also put the location. And somehow you want to map all houses in the city that are uh, currently under, uh, like, uh, uh, basically they're like uh, uh, for selling. Now, you have three attributes. These are the features that are associated to this node, right? Now, we can what we can do, if we transpose this, uh, we can do it the other way around. So these three nodes uh, we can have for node v1 so we're gonna have this actually for each node so each node will have three features or three attributes and still we're gonna have our graph connected so our graph is connected it's just you know each node has additional attributes so we might play around with this so these attributes we can use them in different ways to formalize different problems and for we here in this example we're gonna have what is the size of our matrix guys what is the dimensionality of our matrix X? How many rows? Four rows and three attributes. Okay, so you guys got that. So this is node V1, V2, V3, and we have V4. Okay, good. Great, so I think we got that. So these are different types of graphs and we're gonna revisit them over and over again. 